This is Thursday, May 31st, 1984. We'll be interviewing uh, Ron Brody uh, this afternoon, and I'm Mel Bush, and I'm director of the Estes Park Area Historical Museum, and also here are Sam Gates and Betty Headland. And if they'll just each say their name, then we'll know who it is for reference on the tape. I'm Sam Geeks. And I'm Betty Hedlund. Okay, we'll just shut this off, and when Mr. Brody comes, we'll start right in with him. What do you want first? What do you well, want? Well, let's start maybe with the beginning, like who you are and where you were born, uh -huh. and what got you to ask this part to begin with. Well, I can start that. Are you yeah. ready now? Yeah, <laughs> let's have that. I was born in Denver. Your, your whole man raised in, uh, you know, in Denver, Colorado. I'm a Colorado boy. Yeah. And uh, I came to Estes Park in 1931. And, uh, of course, I was in the grocery business. I was running a chain store in Boulder when I was 18 years old. And uh, then I the Sonner Bright Company in Hickman Lund, I got a Greeley. Called me and wanted me to come to work for him. Of course, me being single it didn't make any difference whether I was living in Boulder or where. So uh, I uh, went to work for them, went to Fort Collins, and then they transferred me to Loveland. Then they transferred me to Estes Park. So I came into Estes Park in 1931, took this store over, and that's how I got to Estes Park. Now that's the store next to the bank, the old no, the bank. That's, that's, that's the, the one with old Sam Service. Sam Service, service okay. Then when did you go up to the... I, I went up there in 1936. Up where? Next to the Estes Park Bank. 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 What Harry Boyd up. Yeah. So we was up there in 1936. I was there for 21 and a half years. And we built our building down there where I am now in 1957. Yeah, really. So... Uh, We've been there ever since. Now, when, when you were up there, uh, was that your own? Were you still affiliated with Honor Bright, or was that your no, own? No, that was our own. My yeah. brother and I was partner. We called him Brody Brothers. Yeah. What was yeah, your brother's right? name? That was Chester. 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 We called him Chet. He never was here. Yeah. Uh, he was a silent partner, yeah. more or less. He and I were going to go in business together, and he wanted to go in the trucking business, and I wanted to go in the grocery <laughs> business, so he... <laughs> But I'll make more money accidentally, and you try to on purpose, so that's the way we did it. <laughs> did you go to school in Denver? Yeah. Where? where did you uh, I went to uh, Columbia and Skinner and North. I oh, did? I went to West. I didn't go to college, but I graduated from high school. Well, you got up in the grocery business uh, just in time to greet the Great Depression, didn't you? Well, probably. Probably. I started in the study in 1927. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. said, uh, well, you got a head start on it. Yeah. Yeah, it was How long years. have you uh, have you always uh, run uh, uh, charge accounts for patrons? No, no, no. We don't run charge accounts. All we use charge accounts for is convenience for those that have money. It's convenience is all we use charge accounts for. It's not to help anybody out that don't have any. Convenience for those that have them. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. more convenient yeah. for them to pay their bill once a month rather than write checks it's every day. day yes. that's, that's why we care. Did yeah. you in the grocery business uh, ever hear of Lanyap? Ever hear of who? Lanyap. That used to be, uh, that's an old uh, agent term, I think. But anyway, it's where the, uh, whoever's in the grocery business, other kinds of business where people pay a monthly bill. The grocer used to uh, give a little sack of candy or something for kids. No, no, yeah. and, uh, and, uh, well, I, when I was a kid in Denver, where I was, we used to patronize a certain grocery store, and that was the practice of that great night. I know. My mother used to give me the checks to pay our bill with a month down there, too, and yeah. they used to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the old uh, barber candy stick. From the, the barber. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, now you were in the store up by the bank when you went in service. That's right. Because I remember Ted Spencer was in there and Dalton he, Barry. Uh, he ran the store for us while yeah, we were Yeah, that's on. what I thought. That's right. What, uh, what branch of the service were you in? I was in the infantry. 
and you're Camp Roberts for how long? Uh, almost two years. They kept me there. They uh, didn't ship me, and then they kept me, and then I was going to ship, and the old man got a hold of me and talked to me on the, out in the field there for two hours, and I decided to stay. And uh, in terms of your uh, public service up there, how long did you uh, serve as mayor? Of, uh, well, I was on the city council for 32 years and uh, served as mayor for two separate terms for 11 years. What what year did what years were those? Uh, it was in 1950s. I've forgotten how many, but I. Uh, Glenn Preston was mayor and he resigned and I took his I finished his term and then I run three of my own which was six years and then his year was seven mm -hmm. and then uh, and I gave my the gavel to Pop Graves and Pop had it for about 16 years and he handed the gavel back to me and I took it over <laughs> again for another four years yeah. I quit in 72 a long time. Yeah, that is. Yeah, it got to be part of my life. That's three and I had to quit. But uh, during that long uh, period of time, uh, what, what stands out in your mind uh, as uh, most, some of the most exciting events that happened? In this well, the most season? exciting uh, things probably were that uh, we had the joining uh, of the Adams Tunnel up there, you know, that uh, was often had the contract. We had things were pretty active around and we slid out of that without any having trouble with our economy at all. We just slid right out of there and right into our regular economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I signed water contracts that we had for years there, you know, with the government and uh, thing or other. But uh, and then zoning, we started zoning. And, uh, it just one thing or another kept the person pretty busy. What? Uh are your most uh, vivid memories of about the uh, opening of Trail Ridge? And, uh, well, I've been up on top shaking hands with the <laughs> mayor on the other side for a good number of years, and we we got to thinking there was nobody else going to do that except to uh, Fred McLaren and I. He was up there. Yeah, too. that. And uh, we shook hands and folded up. And used to be quite an occasion, but we did that for years. I don't know how many years it was, but it was a lot of them. Sometimes we could go over the top, and sometimes we had to drive around. Yeah. But you always, you always uh, had the ceremony. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, we had that. But sometimes they, we would end the gate to there to Rainbow Curve, and they closed the gate in behind us, and <laughs> had the bulldozers, and the, 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 you know, the, the open the road so yeah, far, and we'd have the opening, and then we'd turn around, and come back, and they'd lock the gate again. Maybe it wouldn't be open for a couple of weeks. But we, we had. <laughs> All the time that you served on the city council, did you have any women in the, on the council? What? In the period of time that you served on the city council, were there any women? No. All male, all, all men. Did this is Houston the first uh, woman elected? Yeah, she, she was. was. Yeah. So, what uh, percentage of the uh, people who worked on the on Trail Ridge and the governmental housing down and the dam and that? When did the dam come in here? I can't remember. When did when did we first get the? Uh Gee, I forgot just what the date was. But that was the, I remember when we used to call it the Meadows. Yes, yeah. that's where used to the fish. dam. But I I can't remember the exact date that the. The uh, I think I think it was forty nine, and then they filled it in fifty, I believe. Yeah, yeah I thought it was, it was after the war. It was a long time building because yeah. I remember in forty in the early 40s it was going and everybody lived here they came up they lived in anything well, they the could the tunnel started in the late 30s yeah late well and that's what well it was done that for several years uh, what I was really going to ask uh, was uh, if, do you have any uh, recollections of the of the uh, or indices of the or index of the uh, impact of the governmental workers who were housed up here during the time that uh, this activity was going on. Well, we had lots of them that they wanted certain things done too, but uh, I don't know. We we always uh, kind of figured how that was going to be for the town. 
you know, they what if we did what a lot of them wanted to do, why well, they'd been a, an awful liability to the town. So we didn't do it, and now why uh, there's none of those people around anymore. So it was good that we held out and did what we thought was proper. Well, yeah. yeah, they had a union office up here at one time. Oh, and yeah. But uh, we never had any trouble. We, we had a lot of people working around here, but when that quit, we yeah. slid right into our regular economy and everything just worked fine. Well, I know everything that anybody could rent, a garage or a, a summer home or anything, went to for rentals to those people because they had to have housing. Uh, what are some of the some of the biggest changes that have happened that you remember? I mean, like, I know the tunnel was one thing that caused a lot of the change in Estes. Are there other things that stick out that <laughs> well, were I turning points like the flood was last year? I don't know what you folks think right. about it, but if it wasn't for the National Park, you know, there'd be a lot of it wouldn't be here. Right. Yeah, that's because that's the main attraction, attraction that we have. Mm -hmm. Of course, the tunnel there. helped, and then, of course, we had uh, other things, you know, the uh, National Park expanded a little, and of course when the city expanded, and then when we started zoning, while well, we zoned and we found that you couldn't zone at all at once, you had to take it piece by piece, which was good. I happened to be home at one of their meetings there when the Larimer County tried to zone the whole county, and I went back and said, boy, I, there's no way to start doing that, so when I come back, I started picking the north end first yeah. and we kept adding to it. It worked out real good. Mm -hmm. People saw the benefit of zoning. So I did. Do you associate uh, any particular uh, period or administration in the county government as being uh, more productive, uh, being really like a diamond in a coal bin in terms of uh, you know, our relationship with the city? Well, I, we used to go down to the county and tell them we were the biggest city in the county. Because if they take average population, we were. Yeah. And uh, of course, then uh, when Alf Landon run for president of the United States, he had his headquarters here. I remember that. And uh, that's the last time I rode a horse down Main Street with Alf Landon. Where did he stay? Was it out at Meadowdale? No, he had met McGraw Ranch. At McGraw. Yeah. He had his headquarters at McGraw Ranch. Oh, An interesting period. Where are some of the other outstanding personalities of the national? Oh, we had Bob Meacham here once, and we had uh, the old Queen for a Day, they, we had programs yeah. all started, mm -hmm. and uh, we were lucky that we got the right people, and uh, I don't know, we just uh, just plugged along, and it uh, seemed like we had everything to offer, we had, uh, I don't know how to put it, but it was, uh, we had the climate, clientele and everything else, and it seemed to work real good mm -hmm. as far as we were concerned. Who stands out in your mind as uh, having the best relationship and making the greatest contribution from the Park Service uh, to the... Uh, well, Dave Canfield was the one that uh, did an awful mm -hmm. lot for the park, and of course his wife, Helen. And uh, I can remember when Helen Canfield and Margaret Rossell wrote an ad for the special edition of the trail for me, and their theme was, have fun with food. <laughs> and uh, here just about eight years ago, King Super came out with it, said have fun with food. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we had that uh, slogan years, years and years before. But uh, she did a lot, of, a lot of good, you know, she was the daughter of the founded, founded Stanford University. Oh, is that and, so? Uh, she did a lot for the People and hearing, she was hard of hearing herself, and she did a lot for that. Yeah. Sent a lot of kids to college that nobody ever knew about. What was her name again? Helen Canfield. Oh, yeah. Canfield. And, uh, so, uh, Wasn't any relationship to the Canfield Hotel in Greeley? Uh, no. Yeah, okay. Dave Canfield was the superintendent at that time. And, uh, he was he was great. Yeah, great. he was great. She, do I take so it from your comment that she was the daughter of uh, Leland Stanford? Probably. I think she was probably the only daughter. I'm not sure. But she was a wealthy, wealthy oh, yeah. person. He really was. But you'd never know it. Mm -hmm. Just. Did, uh, did, 
they live in the park area or in the uh, yeah, they live out here above McGraw Ranch. I mean yeah. above uh, uh, McGregor. McGregor Ranch. They had a house for yeah, they had them. two homes mm -hmm. up there. And then at one time, didn't they live down there where Mason fought that along well, the they river? Bought, they bought a couple along the, along the river there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> when they, I don't know whether it was because they couldn't get up to the upper Well, Dave water. had that cabin, and he just uh, kept it, you know, to have his friends and everything yeah. else come up there and use it during the summer. And, yeah. and they, uh, he had a set of rules there <coughs> that he left, you know, to uh, put the dirty laundry here, yeah, and they yeah. had the clean laundry <laughs> there and everything else. And he just, he donated that to them, same as he did in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Is she uh, still living at all? Or? No. 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 Would be no. chances. Ron, do you know Jesse J's wife's name? Irene. <laughs> Somebody's been bugging me about that, and I couldn't come up with that name. Thank what was your last name? A J that had the J, J, J. I could think of, everybody can think of Jesse, but Irene. You couldn't think of Irene. Now i got to remember who asked me. <laughs> People. Oh, they were fantastic. Sure were. Well, Betty said something about you uh, spending some time in Lyons. On the way up here, were well, you in Lyons? Uh, what <coughs> I never did live in Lyons, but I spent my summers in Lyons. So we had a hotel down here, and my dad opened up the quarries back in about 1890. That's before any of us were born. And uh, he employed five and six hundred men in our quarries. Hmm. Railroad run right up to the quarries, and he had uh, practically every uh, nationality in the world. He had Swedes and Norwegians and Finlanders and everything else yeah. in uh, there that worked in there. And of course, he he had the hotel up yeah. there and the railroad up there. He gave the uh, land to the cemetery there in Lyons. He gave the cemetery property. When Dad died, he gave us more land. Large cemetery. And, uh, of course, then he moved his officers to Denver. I was born and raised in Denver, and we just sold our, we had a Victorian home there in Denver. We just sold it about seven, eight years ago. Where was that located? In uh, North Denver. And, uh, so it was uh, one of those things that uh, he had his officers yeah. in Denver. And, of course, everything in Denver was wide open. No gambling and everything. And uh, when they get a payday in Lyons, and it took two hours to go on the train from Denver to Lyons to Denver. And uh, Monday morning they'd call Dad up, Eastwood, said we have so and so, so and so, so and so down here. What do you want done with them? And he'd say take them down to the depot and put them on a train and send them back to Lyons. But now that was in an interurban or a train. Uh, that was a Burlington Railroad. Burlington. Burlington. Yeah. And that came into the little. Redstone Station that's still down there. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, was that for east of Lyons? North. North. That's mm -hmm. there was one east, and we I still know. have we still have 120 acres of quarry left. Oh, you do. Real good mm -hmm. quarry. Yeah. Now, is that red uh, sandstone? Red sand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do the, uh, the way you drive down there today is that the stone part of that from that quarry or someplace else? Which stone are you talking about? Uh, that flagstone. Red, uh, you mean that that's uh, piled up around the well, in those, Did you make in the turn toward yards? Wolf Foothills Road right there? Well, that's uh, Lucas Brothers. They have that. They uh, they buy the stone that these uh, people get out for. Mm -hmm. They buy it. Well, didn't, did you send any to the University of Colorado? Yes, we furnished all the stone for the Mackey Auditorium yeah. down there. And then uh, we sawed a lot of stone, too, for, for Brothers. Uh, uh, very handy and digging and running quarries and everything. He sold them a lot of sawed stone, too. And then the, the university had their own quarries up Left Hand Canyon. Yeah, I remember and, that. Uh, my brother run those. One of my other brothers run those quarries for them. Well, how many brothers did you have? I had five brothers. Five brothers. You had a sister. I had five brothers, and my sister had six. <laughs> a large family. I had four sisters, and my sister only had three. Is, is Brody uh, <laughs> Scotch? Oh, uh, yes. My dad was born in Scotland. Uh, would you want to spiel off the names of your brothers and sisters? 
so I don't know if it's necessary, but I did. I had four sisters uh, and five brothers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we also have a castle over in Scotland named the Brody Castle. That's up in Inverness, Scotland. Did any golfers come out of that? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I play golf, but I think I'm about the only one that I know of in our family. You bowl, too. I'm about the only one that bowls bowl. in our family, too. Do you still bowl? Yeah. Still bowl. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know you used to always have a league, and you always followed all the... Well, I had a traveling bowling yeah. team for 20 yeah. years. We bowled all the United States. Yeah. Advertising that support. Yeah. And having fun doing it. What do you think the, uh, the impact of... Uh, you could dodge this question if you choose to for uh, sensitive reasons, but uh, maybe you'd care to comment. What what would you predict the impact of a Safeway store will be on, in terms of other uh, grocery business, so on here? And well, I could comment. You know, we had a Safeway here for two years. No, I didn't. When yeah. you didn't know that? I forgot. When was that? That was back in nineteen oh thirty five. Seven, they, uh, they were here when I first started my business. I think we had one of their parts, John. And I used to work. Uh, I worked in chains before I came up here. Where Safeway? Well, the Safeway was buying all of them out. So I suppose them. I worked a little bit for them, but I worked. In, I figured I had my first chain store in Boulder when I was just a kid. It was a grocery chain. That's right. We had uh, stores all over. Colorado and Wyoming and yeah. New Mexico, similar to our AG organization. Yeah. Only they owned all the stores themselves. Yeah, that Safeway was at uh, Sam Services too, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a store there yeah. before they did. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, uh, we have a we have a picture here somewhere that shows that that Safeway. Yeah. There. And I'm sure that cart came from there. We have a green push cart. Little green one? Yeah. We that, had little green one. That, 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 that came from, from there. Yeah. I didn't. Probably are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was. I think it came from there. I'm sure it did. It's a yeah. spitting image of those yeah. that I I remember down there. Yeah. So. <laughs> what uh, impact did the uh, flood of uh, July 15 have on your operation as your president? This year, this Last year, yeah, it, it really, it really, uh, we had almost four foot of water in our store. That's a, that's a lot. Yeah, that probably took us over a couple hundred thousand. And of course, we got hit up the street too. Mm -hmm. so that was another mm -hmm. tough thing. Never received anything yet. We're hoping to recover some. But that's that. Well, you've got gotten hit down there with water before when it came down that little clip by the uh, field. The yeah, that was nothing but real bad. No, it but just it was across the main street and in the front door. So yes, I know, but we people, swept it out. you swept like mad and oh, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> like mad, that <laughs> that it, at least it was coming right towards oh, your, it's it's sort of a low place yeah. there. But after that, see, they put the new road in the yeah, and that underground. Mm -hmm. Tended it a little bit, so we didn't have any more trouble after. That was Black Canyon Creek. Yeah, Black Canyon. I couldn't think of what river the, in behind us. Was yeah, right long. behind the uh, football field. What do you remember, uh, kind of off the top of your head, what do you remember as outstanding uh, events related to the cattle uh, to the tail of death? What, what okay, question do you have now? Start over again. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you think of anything, uh, outstanding events, uh, coverage, uh, Personalities related to uh, the uh, Trail Gazette. No, Anything I know. For years, we uh, I've been advertising for Trail for years. Of course, we yeah. used to be just a Trail, and then, then they had another paper, the Arctic Gazette, and they combined. combined. Yeah. Of course, I sold Mr. Grocery, Mr. Stanley Groceries. Garage and he had a turnstile in his garage to dry 
drive in straight ahead and just turn, then you can drive straight up. Drive back. Is there a reverse on this uh, Stanley scheme? I think they could back him up. There was some reason that he didn't want to back up, and I've heard several stories. Do you know why? <coughs> well, no, I, I talked to Mr. Stanley. I didn't uh, talk to him about the reverse for the letter. I said uh, when he sold out. He sold out to some people. I won't uh, mention anything about that, but whoever bought him out, why uh, they knew more about it than Mr. Stanley and his brother did. And uh, so they they figured that people who didn't want to fire up a car to start it, they'd rather push a button and start it. So he said these folks knew more about it than they did, so they sold it to him. But I understand they took it back later. Uh, you never did hear why he didn't want to back up, though. I've heard that he was afraid of running over people, and then I've heard other stories. And I, I don't know. I, uh, I, never, I didn't know I if he had ever... up there, but I know he had a turnstile there in his uh -huh. uh, well, garage. He drove straight yeah. in, and yeah. he turned it, and he could drive straight yeah. up. I well, didn't. being an inventor, maybe that was one of his maybe pet things yeah, to, yeah. to do. Yeah. I know he told me there when I was a kid, he says, you know, the strongest stool in the world is a three-legged stool. Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, yeah. There are there any things, uh, you know, little stories about various people. Not not that we want to tell stories on them, but I mean things that would have remembrances of, of different people, like Stanley or others that you can think well, of. I remember Abner Sprague. He uh, when he sold the Sprague Lodge, he he kept the uh, uh, they gave him permission. To fish any time you want out of his lake out there. Uh -huh. Of course, they leased it to him for about a dollar a year. They, they got to keep him for about 20 years when they bought him out. And I used to go out with Mr. Sprague. We'd fish there in the wintertime any time we wanted to. Top of the ice and fish. Do you remember Stead? No, I, uh, I didn't know Mr. Stead. I knew Will Lewis yeah. and all, but I didn't know Mr. Stead. I knew Ed Schultz. Then of course there's Johnny Adams. Yeah, Johnny Adams. I took him to my to the father and son banquet when he was eighty some years old, and I took Abner Sprague to the father and son banquet when he was about ninety one. And I took Harry Boyd, who was eighty seven or so. I took him to the now this was in the period of three yeah. years. I uh, took him to my son. See, I had two daughters, and he, so I took him to my son, father and son banquet. Just kind of a, yeah. a little lark. Yeah. You know, you know Johnny Adams, I knew him, and then, of course, old uh, Minor Bill. Oh, I, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was right. a great friend of mine. Nobody else could do it. But he just couldn't get along. Nobody yeah. else wanted yeah. me, I guess. Yeah. Well, so. you probably took time and trouble with him, Ron, and no others wouldn't. Yeah, we have a few things of his, you know, yeah. letters and so forth that uh, uh, were given to us, and uh, that yeah. tell a little bit about some of the some of the things. You know, they were trying to get him off his land and all that. Well, he used to set up there, you know, the shotgun there. On the, <laughs> yeah, I know. On the, uh, uh, National Park, Park, and they wouldn't go in there either. And uh, so he willed that property to me. I forgot where I have that deal. I got it someplace about it. Probably will. So anyhow, he, uh, I told Dave Canfield, I said, now, I'm going to go up on our property, and I'm going to sit there, and I'm not going to let any of you in on that property. I said, yes, I said, get in there. <laughs> <laughs> I can just be Dave. Just joking with him. Yeah, I know. Oh. Do you remember anything about uh, Joe or Ethel Mills, uh, Craig? Didn't know Joe Mills. Uh, oh, I knew him, but not too well. Joe wasn't up here as much, though, was he? No. Wasn't he was. He was coaching yeah. down at yeah, down at uh, Bowling. Right. Mm -hmm. Her name is Ethel. Yeah. yeah, Johnny Adams used to spend a lot of time down in front of your store when he was over there. He, uh, he was yeah. the door. Yeah, man. he he was the door man for me. He'd come in every morning and 
Just any dirt around the floor, he'd sweep it up and yeah. put it in, and he was really. I took me to the doctor down in the. Doctor, he was so mad taking the doctor, and I took him down there, and they wouldn't believe he was 80 some years old. And uh, I took him down, and they got him better, and then they went over to Boulder. Great friends of Paul Webb. So, How'd you get along up here year round without a hospital? We just stayed healthy. Yeah, hardy people. <laughs> yeah, you didn't. But, uh, I don't know. We had uh, our doctors that we contacted, you know, that could give. And of course, if anything too vital was wrong, I suppose we went to the valley. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the doctors? Was Dr. Mall and who else? Dr. Mall was one. Dr. Weist was the first one. I understand he was mayor of the town one time. So yeah. He was yeah. the first mm -hmm. mayor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mall took care of my family when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I don't remember any between Weiss and Mall for some reason. Well, well there were some that came in, but then they didn't stay long. They went over to Steamboat and, you know, other places. They just couldn't make it. Well, like young Doc, he came up from another beer he's dad, but yeah, he he's an eager beaver and everything, and it's just too much. There wasn't enough here for him. No, here, so he went to California. Yeah. That's where he way had to eat it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, you knew Billy Severe. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Billy was I can remember him as a kid when yeah. he sat on the back yeah, porch of McDonald's life, yeah. fishing. Yeah. He just always dressed in that black suit, That's right, long, yeah. thin rail. Mm -hmm. But a pool player. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. where Mike is. Mike where the wheel bar is? Yeah, that, uh, Matt, Mike yeah. bought that. That was a Mike pool. Nagel. Yeah, that was a pool hall. Yeah, that's... Uh, what do you remember about the dark horse in uh, Riverside? That, uh, <laughs> well, you know, Ted Jussel on that. Yeah. And when Nub Gillen told us, yeah. I would have to be American. Said that the city ought to have that for parking, and I said, We sure could. And uh, so he said, These fellows want to buy it, they're going to put a gift store, uh, have a mall with gift stores all around back in there, everything else. And he said, I think the town should have it. And so he said he didn't want his money all at once, he wanted over a period of 10 years, so we lined up. And Bought the property with them. The godsend of that oh, whole yeah. block, that, mm -hmm. well, the whole main street of the godsend block. Yeah. For parking. Yeah. Well, what, uh, what are your memories about uh, is it the old woodshed or the wood, the, where the mall is? Uh, remember what used to be transportation? transportation. Uh, so the uh, uh, Rocky Mountain Transportation yeah. Company. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I had a cousin who used to work there. His name was Pete McDonald. He lived in Estes Park before I come up there. Do you remember them? Doesn't do anything to me. He had a, a daughter and a son. And uh, he was here before I come up here. And he left before I came up here. And, uh, but it's uh, Casey Rockwell. I guess he used to yeah. work for my dad down there in, in Lyons. He, they all, a lot of those people came from Lyons. Yeah, I, I knew and, uh, that. I served on the town board with Casey Rockwell when he was mayor. Was that transportation uh, company uh, designed primarily for the Fall River road trip, or was it? Well, no. See, they came out of Denver. They had the uh, and they had the uh, franchise from Denver to Essex. And, uh, and of course, they had the chalet. They had the chalet, and they had the Grand Lake, uh, Grand Lake Lodge, and the. They had their tours that they'd stop at all the mm -hmm. places there and all. And, uh, Earl Emery? Yeah, I they remember They had the him. Stanley Hotel there, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. and, uh, That's when it had all the Indian rugs on the lobby floor. Yeah, right. I don't remember that. I always remembered those Indian rugs. Where was that? Quite an outfit. That's the Stanley. Oh. And uh, one he of the in-laws had the Lewiston Hotel. Yeah. You remember speaking of the Lewiston, that and what other fires around town do you have good memories, or not good memories, well, good I memories 
of? Down here at the plantation one time when I had a good fire. I was fire chief when the Lewiston burned. And, uh, it was uh, quite a fire. In yeah. fact, uh, I can't think of his last name, but he was in the store at the time. And, uh, I told him, I said, uh, you want to ride up with me? I said, your hotel's on fire. So he, <laughs> he rode up with me and we went in the in the hotel in the lobby and I said, what do you want done first? Well, he said, I think we better uh, uh, make these people aware that we got a fire and we have to get out. So that's what yeah, we kind of. Well, what about that one went pretty fast, didn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, as soon as they chopped holes in the roof. Yeah. Yeah. What about the, the Higby fire? Remember that up on the hill? Was he the... Nina Higby? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember that. There one. was a fire up there when... And it just took this house, and it wasn't Higby, it was a in that family, though. What went back to the Higby. Lewis, and uh, what was the, uh, what's the speculation as to why that wasn't rebuilt? And they haven't used that uh, area, it's beautiful. It seems oh, it was a beautiful area, but I suppose it would just cost too much money to do it, and apparently, you know, there's only one Estes Park. You still have summer and winter. If you check back and read and, and hear about Stanley Hotel and all these years and uh, see why that yeah. kept going, you, you just wonder. So as I say, it's one of those things that I don't know. Uh, is that property still in the same family hand or is it turned over since the fire? Do you have any idea? I think they sold it. I think it's... Yeah. On Didn't that, that's the lowest one you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I'm on, sure. on that one, did you ever determine what the cause was on that? I've heard speculations of flu or electrical or something. We had the fire department from down below come up and help us about that. Yeah. What about uh, like the Sherwood, Sherwood and uh, right. Josephine and like those? Well, the Sherwood. Uh, I was gone the day that caught on fire. Wasn't in town. I was going. I'd been in there. Boy, bought that. Yeah. I'd been in the day before that it did catch fire. Was in there with Leona Gray's measuring, and we always had a funny feeling, you know, after being in there alone sure. with the key and all. Yeah, that's. Uh, oh, and the Long's Peak fire. When the Long's Peak Inn burned, when the Fagan boys had it, the, the Estes Park went to that, didn't it? We, we went Matthew. there. Of course, if the city had to take care of the fire department itself, why we could only stay inside the city limits. Yeah. But it's uh, been a donation deal, and it's been volunteer, and it's uh, we have a call for help why they, they people go. from all over. Yeah. Donate to the mm -hmm. fire department, so it helps the city. Yeah. It helps all of us. Yeah. 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 What's What's the biggest fire you remember as far as when you were involved in that? Yeah, I imagine that Lewiston probably mm -hmm. was. However, that uh, one down at the uh, plantation was a pretty good mm -hmm. one. That was cold. Yeah, that was. Yeah. That was the one. Where right after that is when they built the building they have now. I mean, it's, well, they was that a different yeah. Yeah. They didn't pay it all now. No. To your knowledge, was there ever any uh, interest expressed by the Dunraven uh, family, uh, heirs, and so on in the historical, in Estes Park? Uh, no, no communication? Not that, not that I know of, no. Not that I, not that I recall any. It probably was, was, but I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. Just wondered, uh, seeing that the, the uh, Estes family... The, uh, James's and those people, they probably were pretty active on that. But, uh, you wouldn't... That is start to say something there. Well, I don't know if that was really yeah. It wasn't in my post. <laughs> <laughs> No, my question about Dunraven, uh, seeing the uh, interest that the Estes families had in having family reunions up here periodically every 10 mm -hmm. years or something, 
I often wondered if there'd be any any chance of getting the Dunraven family over here for some kind of they, uh, build that up as a community. I doubt it, really. The uh, last I heard, the the last heir, uh, they had sold the manor over in in uh, Ireland, and he was pretty crippled up anyway. I think he had polio or something, and so. From what I've heard of people that have visited over there, they really didn't seem to have that much interest in coming here. They were always interested in people that would visit them from yeah. here. Mm-hmm. No, I think there's something that's just going to be in the past and stay there. Yeah. I mean, the name brought up. He didn't have too many uh, good memories mm-hmm. to write about mm-hmm. it, uh, and so his heirs, I don't think. Would he wasn't playing fair either, so that. Of course, you knew Donald McGregor and, and naturally Neil Young. <coughs> yeah. By eggs. Yeah. Potatoes. Mm-hmm. All from them. You could visit with them in the front room, that's when you could get in the front room. Yeah. Very nice people. Yeah. I know Sammy Buchanan used to go up there and Victoria, and they used to tell me about, you know, things that happened up there and how good they were to him and well it's yeah. really something Victoria Sammy was yeah. very loyal to him yeah <coughs> yeah I look over at that little house and I think of the many nights that I went over there and watched Bob Hope with him <laughs> because Stacy's had always saw that he had a good TV well, Wayne Stacy and, mm-hmm. and them, you know, Victoria used to work with them. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, Stacy's when they built their place, you know, they, they had, I think, a boy and a girl both. I'm not sure. Yeah, they did. But anyhow, they'd come in the store and they'd want to stay with me and their, their folks would say, come on, we're going to go. And say, no, we're going to help Ron here. they <laughs> take them in there and help me if there's a water <laughs> right for them. <laughs> I don't know, it's sort of sad what they've done to that beautiful home. Well, now the Livingston home is turning turn it back to like it used to be. In yeah, place. I'm glad to see that. Because that was a beautiful place. Do you have any uh, particular memories about uh, that you associate with uh, the uh, summer population versus the winter around the year? Such as the Greeley Colony and the whatever you know. Fort Morgan. Well, I don't know. Uh, of course, our our community never has grown leaps and bounds. It's always been the slow, healthy growth. And uh, it seems to me like uh, uh, the old timers here they they don't sell their homes. They pass it on to the kids. Yeah. And uh, I know we dealt with the old folks and then they're their kids and then the, their kids and their kids and now we're starting I suppose with the fourth or fifth <laughs> generation of kids and uh, but uh, well, they were a great bunch of people oh they came out and they just stayed I had <coughs> put down old birds over there because I always they always come to mind that's right out there at Brayside yeah. well Mary you know she's still yeah, up yeah. there and mm-hmm. Mary Jensen yeah she comes and in she here she comes in the whole time and Great people. Yeah, that's the old birds. Yeah, that's yeah. our place. Uh, Kitty's grandfather bought in 1903, and we uh, remodeled it. And that's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Which place was that, Sam? Right there on Prospect, right up, right directly up from Somerville, right there. Uh, oh, out of Somerville. Oh, right on. Right, right up yeah. the hill from it. Mm-hmm. He sold the 40 acres to the Craigs to the Mills. Yeah, we see Parker. Yeah. Parker. His name is Parker. Parker. Yeah, I, I, I remember Parker. Parker. Bruce Parker. Been that was Kitty's maiden. Yeah. Oh, I didn't we know used that. to deliver groceries, those old widows and everything yeah. else, and <laughs> take in the coal and wood and everything else. And, and the mail. Back porch. Yeah, yeah, we've oh, done yeah, mail to did Mrs. Dane's up there. Oh, yeah, Helen Dane. Helen Dane. She yeah. always called me if she left town because uh, she was kind of looked after. Yeah. Yeah, Ron's been, does things for everybody. You have for years and years. I think 
Indeed. The name is one that keeps bouncing up all the time. Yeah. That's why all the members of the uh, community of the uh, museum board wanted to get this interview with you on tape. You're supposed to have your, your voice recorded as well as uh, the background that you can provide. Now, you were talking about, about giving candy to the kids when they pay the bills. Well, some people don't even have a charge. The kids get their candy at, at, uh, thank, or at uh, Halloween, only if you were a big <laughs> round <laughs> orange one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we give pumpkins away. We've done that for you. Oh, heavens. Gosh, I don't know how many years. Though. I don't know. You've always had 40 years, maybe. Oh, it's got to be that, or maybe yeah, longer. Maybe longer. You give oh, away a bunch of those every year, don't you? About mm -hmm. how many? In a year, mm -hmm. while well, like say last year. Oh yeah, we get one. We get those long ones. Long ones. Long one. I used to go out in the field and get them myself yeah. when I first started. Yeah. That would be a. It used to be quite a chore. Yeah, it would be. Got to stay young all the time. <laughs> 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 I'm really good. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Well, there were so many people up here, and of course you knew them all, like the Yours and the. And Sterling's and the whole. Yeah. See, do you remember uh, anything about uh, Gay Partridge Adams? Oh, no. He was out in the ring. He had the, you remember the ring? I call it the ring cabin out on Fish Creek next to the ferrets. Uh, well, that's the, the, uh, the one that, uh, that the artist who bought that. The, uh, mm -hmm. Later on, he wrote a couple of books. The books, I can't, so well. Soglo. 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 Yeah, yeah. That's the one. And, and uh, he had that for a while. Kitty's grandfather had uh, Gay Partridge Adams uh, do a, a watercolor, which we have uh, up to the Marine, right there in front of the house, but up that Marine part, and for a wedding present for her grandmother. And then five years later, he commissioned him to do another one at, uh, up in Marine Park. And uh, Beautiful watercolor. See the Sweet family out here. You know they're, you yes. know their uh, dad used to be governor. Yes, Governor Sweet. And when I was uh, going to Skinner Junior High School in Denver, I uh, I was head of the color guard, and he come out and gave us a check up here one yeah. day. You know to kind of look us all over and see how we were. Governor Sweet. And there were, I, I had a picture of he and the color guard there. Maybe I've given it to these folks up here. I'm not sure. That's a great house out there. His granddaughter is here now. Uh, the charm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, going back to, to uh, the painting, out there at the, what I always have called the ring cottage, at the home, really, that's the one where they say that there is some work done where in the Front room or the Somewhere, I, I don't know if there's a porch or someplace where he had painted hey, right on, on the wall. wall. And a mural or something? Yeah. Yeah. And we. That's what we've heard. We I've spoke never, about it, but I don't uh, have never really known anybody there to go up and knock on the door and say, and of course, somebody could be just dumb enough to have painted mm -hmm. over something. People as, do that. <laughs> as great as that. Or put up. Uh, Something. Paneling or something. That yeah. wouldn't be mm -hmm. so bad to put paneling. But I just wondered if that was. We'll that check that out. Yeah, you ought to. I, I remember uh, going to the Denver Art Museum and uh, they had the exhibits in there yeah. of uh, J. Art mm -hmm. and uh, Charles Partridge Adams. Uh, they, uh, and they also uh, spoke of. Uh, he must have had connections in Taos and Santa Fe or New Mexico as well. Well, probably. Because I don't think anybody ever lived. I think that was a summer home out there until maybe Soglo. Soglo? Took it over. But all those old homes up and down there that have changed hands. And By the time that you uh, had come up here to establish your business, uh, had the, uh, the horse buggy and that sort of thing pretty largely disappeared with oh, the yes. uh, wheels. Mm -hmm. we I never did well, wheels, but maybe once in a while we'd ride from the depot up in the horse and buggy. We had buggies up there too. The stadium. My brothers had cars. Mm -hmm. We all had cars. 
but the horse was very prevalent up here, like in liveries. And well, yeah, you never did know. You know, you just ride a horse up to you and, uh, where you were staying, let loose, and go back to the barn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so they always had that. Horses down in front of the house, one mm -hmm. back, riders mm -hmm. let you know. And, uh, in fact, when you rented one of those, it would let you know how to ride. It was hard to keep from turning around and going yeah, back. Yeah, they wanted to go home. <laughs> and if you ever stopped and had a uh, picnic or anything, you know, you had to bowl them down. One of the things that in the uh, interviews that I've read that are on uh, file over at the library, there is a total absence of any reference to uh, law enforcement. And, and if you read Western uh, folks as I do, why that's always uh, a large part of the plot, you know. And I wondered how, how have we been so fortunate as to have avoided any kind of an exterior. You don't see a great monument as a jail and all of that sort of well, thing. We had E. Colton. Oh, yeah, he was really and he was a friend of all the kids, so that really they do things like move telephone poles and stuff like that at Halloween, but never got too rambunctious. Mm -hmm. And Gene ba the bank. Yeah, those shows. Uh, Gene Colton used to put Fred Toy to bed, you know. Yes, I know. I saw his he name the other day in this. Fred had beat him back to the dark horse. We <laughs> 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 couldn't figure out how he got there, you know. So bad. Oh, it's just. Where did uh, Tully work? He worked for himself. He, he was a painter. A painter, okay. He had this Chevrolet automobile. He never had it in high gear. He was always <laughs> in second. He never, did, <laughs> never did put it in high gear at all. Oh, heaven. Probably the roads wouldn't allow it anyway. <laughs> well, when he took his foot off the gas, mm -hmm. he slowed down right now. Yeah, <laughs> he wasn't any cool with him. Yeah. <laughs> I could just see Eve Holden, though. And who was Patrolling. Eve Holden? Was that the, he was local, the only law? Yeah, he was that a now, uh, con uh, not constable. What was his title? It wasn't chief of police. Well, he, he was just a police. town marshal or something. Uh, yeah, marshal. Uh, uh, what you tell her? What's her name? Um, Madam Catherine. Yeah, right. She and you know she married. Oh know, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right, I do remember that. How long has she been around coming oh, up there? Since I can remember, and of course, it's. Uh, of course, I don't know. Nobody ever says anything against her or bothers her, so nobody ever bothers Adam Catherine. Yeah. Yeah. She's, uh, she's parks and that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, and a wonderful person. Yeah. yeah. I was always afraid to go to her, though, for fear she'd tell me something that would just worry me <laughs> into an early grade, Frank. Well, you, you, uh, you'd be doing what she's told you you was doing, even whether you was or not. Yeah. <laughs> That's the secret of that. Yeah, right. but I, I just left to leave that stuff strictly alone. <laughs> I don't know. I Do you remember anything uh, about uh, the theaters? About the uh, the movie houses mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And yeah, well, I knew Ralph Gwynn that had the theater there when I came up there. And uh, of course, Sam Service, you know, he owned the building, the building down there with the other theater. Mm -hmm. Of course, I used to have my warehouse there in the back there in the theater building. And uh, Charlie Herzog and him had the the home place. At the yeah, Sam I knew Service that. There. Mm -hmm. Did they tear his house down, or did no, they just convert it? Yeah. Yeah, they uh, quite a bit of it. Yeah, because uh, Fran was working there, and they started building around it yeah. and would tear little chunks yeah, down as they right. went. And she said they never knew when they were going to fall through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, do you know anything about the log cabin cafe? Oh, yeah. What the history of that? When well, it, gee, I don't remember, but it's one of the oldest cafes in town. Yeah. Now, uh, I understand this last year, you know, uh, Bob Johnson, so he couldn't make it there. He, he lost it. But, uh, it's just changed hands just recently. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. The folks that, that uh, owned it took it back, and I, they might have sold it again. Mm -hmm. But 
Bob Johnson, he was, uh, uh, I think he worked for McDonald's. He had this fast food business, you know, he was quite good at it, I guess, and everything else. But that place up there was, uh, well, one of the oldest restaurants mm -hmm. yeah. in the country around here. Mm -hmm. Was it originally, uh, was it, you mentioned Johnson, was it originally Johnson Meat Market or something like that a long, that, long time I don't ago? Know. That I can't tell you. Uh, we've seen yeah, that name familiar, is familiar, uh, Johnson, but uh, of course we brought Harry Boyd out and see yeah. he was there for, up there in the bank mm -hmm. there for so long. So I don't know what it was. It's been a restaurant long before I ever came to this yeah. park. I know it was. I, uh, I don't come into lines. I used to spend my summers down there and he'd come in and he wanted his car pulled or pushed to Estes Park and I'd come up and help him. And uh, he bought me a sandwich here after we got up there in the old log cabin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that thing's been going as long as I can remember. Well, it's Casey, uh, Casey and uh, the number yard. Gary, K uh, Gary Casey and, and uh, uh, your wife's name. Yeah. But they had that for a long time. Mm -hmm. Do you have any memories about uh, that stand out about uh, fishing or hunting? Any poaching? Well, or <laughs> when I first come up here, why uh, uh, anybody that really needed uh, the meat and get a deer or an elk mm -hmm. in the winter time, as long as they didn't hang it out on the front porch and uh, you they know uh, defy the law, why uh, they didn't seem to do much to them because everybody needed it. And, as long as they used it all, why, there wasn't too much said about it, but if they sold them or something like that, yeah. then that'd be a different situation. Yeah. Was there much, I know in the 20s there were some things about the, with the Ku Klux Klan up there. Was there much after you came? No, there was none of that when I came up. I didn't yeah. get here to 31, but there was no, yeah. no Ku Klux Klan. Were you a charter member of uh, the Rotary? No. Do you remember anything about Rotary that stands out uh, in your memory? Well, I was president of Rotary when uh, we had uh, uh, Captain Coach Reed, you know, up here as our program, and I was only here two weeks afterwards, so I was gone. So mm -hmm. I used to razz him about it when I come back. I said, yeah, I'll get you up here as our program, and then I said, you draft me and take me in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was from Loveland, wasn't he? Yeah. And, uh, I'm trying to think of the colonel's name that uh, was head of the program in Washington. He was really, he was head of the placement office at the right. uh, campus there. Yeah. And he reached out and, and brought in, uh, what was his name? From, you just mentioned Reed. Coach Reed? Yeah, Reed. Reed. Mm -hmm. Reed. His football coach uh, yes. at the mm -hmm. high school. One of the fellows. Super fellow. Yeah, he could have got governor of the state anytime he wanted. He want to run yeah. for it. Well, are there any other? No, but I'm real pleased to have had an opportunity yeah. to uh, uh, visit with well, you. Well, I'm Mr. Brody. That's a pleasure. I, mean. I don't see much of you now. Well, I'm back again, Betty. We, we took a trip. a month off there in uh, last September, and then my sister took Deputy Six in Loveland. So we were in and out of Loveland there for mm -hmm. another six months. And one thing or another, you know, we just got tied up. And, and, uh, so well, I miss seeing you in the store. But I'm back again now, so I'm around there. Back. Like, yeah, I'm back. Like, I'll be there the rest of the summer. Yeah. Well, good. Well, we, we, we appreciate it, really. Well, that's and, all right. Uh, you betcha. If you uh, think of anything that, you know, that you feel would add to the the history of anything, we'll let us do you, know. Do you still own the property that was willed to you that you mentioned in the earlier comments? You mean in the National Park? National yeah. Park. Well, yeah, it was a fluke. But yeah. you, See, he just said, I proudly will to Brody. Brody. If you uh, ever run across yeah, if, I, if I do, why, yeah. I'll see if you get it over yeah, here. It would be nice to have him. It wouldn't stand here. up in court, I'm sure. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it didn't. It, no, it, it no, didn't I, then. No. <laughs> if you had a double minor barrel bill. shotgun, it'd stand <laughs> up a lot better than a lot of things today. That's right. Oh, minor barrel. But, he was, but you know, that fellow would come in and trade with me all winter long. And it's just soon summer yet. He'd go up there and he lived uh, off of nature the rest mm -hmm. of the summer. He never, I knew he didn't uh, see yeah. nobody else. No. He had a great house up there. Oh, you bet. It was fantastic. Oh, we've got pictures around. Yeah. It's 
so, but I don't think we have any pictures of him, do we? Maybe we do. I have to look back in the file. Oh, yeah, had no suitcase. That's probably yeah, what you that's got. What we yeah, we got that we suitcase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Betty, uh, Betty gave us that. <clears throat> Betty brought it in. It was either from her or it was from the, uh, police, from the police department, I believe. But then they gave it, I think, to Betty because they knew she mm -hmm. was in the museum. Yeah, okay. It's been a great town, a great place to live. Well, I tell you, it is inspiring. Mm -hmm. And I think of Roberta and Fran together, yeah. and Bill Herzog, yeah. and all of those, yeah. and they had a good time in school. And Before this thing runs out, do you have any suggestions on any of the buildings downtown that might have been covered up? that might have some neat old building underneath a piece of plastic that might <laughs> that somebody might be able to take back and really make them look better. What well, would have the churches up there? Wasn't that that one time still had that bar in there that or something? Yeah, I think that's kind of Grace's, wasn't it? Well, I don't know. Right what, there, well, Grace's might be. Did they remodel that? Market. Well, I suppose you could hit every store and just say, you know, some of them are run by, mm -hmm. now that's a grandson that runs Grace, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some of those you might just find out. Now, Baird's could be the same, except for Seabolt's now. Mm -hmm. Jack would now That mean, used uh, to be uh, Billy Park's. Place. Yeah, and they, mm -hmm. and uh, um, the Seabolt boy would certainly be able to tell you something. When did Billy Park's have the uh, Seabolt? It was, uh, I think, in in the twenties, I believe. And it would have been Baird before. Well, Baird, I, I sold the Baird's groceries when I worked in the. In the well, valley. it would be that same he, building. The yeah, park yeah. died in twenty seven yeah. or something well, like that. Well, twenty six yeah. or seven. I didn't know that. But, uh, now that might be one to look into because I don't think that's been changed that much. You walk across those floors. And I asked Jim Siebel about that. Yeah, he, yeah. Yeah. Couldn't think of Jim. But while people are doing things downtown now, it'd be I think the ideal time to kind of get some of the look back. Just go pull used a board be. off the wall and look <laughs> and see what you got. <laughs> There's got to be some little hunks of something left. Well, I uh, I've been talking to a few people about the log cabin. Yeah, down there. and, and they, they, they somebody they're working on it. Yeah, but they called, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, I talked to them down yeah. last the other day. Because they wanted to know something about it so they could keep up to the... They're working on it now. Well, I guess this thing's about to run out. Well, and well, again, Ron, we appreciate it. Just great to well, have you do this. We appreciate it.